told you. Phase two of the MCU is kind of weird. You go from Thor the Dark World to uh, one of the best films in the MCU. It's a legitimately great film. Are you an everyday nerd? Hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so that you don't miss the next episode. Yo, welcome to your everyday nerd, B-Sides Editions. I'm your host, Zach Snyder, and on the B-Sides, we take a look at anything and everything in the same form as your everyday nerd. They're just shorter, unsponsored episodes. As we continue the rewatch for the MCU for Endgame, Phase 2 is halfway done. I like the first Captain America a decent amount, and I've only seen the Winter Soldier a couple times, but I know so many people that love this film. So let's take a look at it. Coming up on the drop zone, Cap. You do anything fun Saturday night? Well, all the guys in my barbershop quartet are dead, so... No, not really. For those who don't know anything about it, 2014's Captain America The Winter Soldier is the ninth film in the MCU and was directed by the Russo brothers. Following the events of the Avengers, Steve Rogers is now working with S.H.I.E.L.D. alongside Black Widow. During a mission, Nick Fury is attacked by the mysterious Winter Soldier, and we find out that Hydra is not only still extremely active, but they are working actively to destroy S.H.I.E.L.D. Winter Soldier is probably the most gritty, realistic film in the MCU. That's not to say that Steve Rogers and the Winter Soldier don't have superhuman strength and are a little bit unrealistic, but comparing it to films like Spider-Man Homecoming or Thor Ragnarok, this film is a lot more grounded. We don't have a whole lot of superpowers and CGI filling up the screen. Instead, the Russo brothers take the time to carefully choreograph the fight scenes, making for a film that looks incredibly real. This is hands down the main reason that most people love this film more than the majority of the MCU, and it's definitely on my list of strengths. It's very refreshing to go from the CGI fest that is Thor The Dark World to a more realistic, grittier Winter Soldier. As far as the action scenes go, my favorite scene is definitely the elevator scene. It's something that we don't see that often and it was handled quite well. But action scenes aside, Winter Soldier gives us a deeper look into the characters that we have seen before, but haven't had a whole lot of insight on. Nick Fury and Black Widow are both expanded on a good bit. I love the chemistry between Natasha and Steve throughout the entire film. The organization of S.H.I.E.L.D. is definitely more important than it has ever been. And even though we've had a massive time skip between most of Captain America the First Avenger and this film, the events that happened in the first two thirds of the First Avenger are still extremely important to the MCU. And that is especially important when it comes to the evil organization Hydra. Spoilers incoming for pretty much the rest of the video, so if you don't want to see them, I completely understand. But here we go. We find out towards the middle of the film that Hydra infiltrated S.H.I.E.L.D. sometime in the 1940s. This was my favorite part of Winter Soldier by far. Here we have S.H.I.E.L.D., which has been a part of the MCU since Iron Man 1, and now we find out that there have been Hydra agents around since the very beginning. Even this dumbass senator from Iron Man 2 comes out as a Hydra agent. It's absolutely insane, and I don't think anybody was quite expecting this big of a twist in a Captain America sequel. This is the film that ends up destroying S.H.I.E.L.D., which has a big impact on the rest of the MCU. In fact, it's not just S.H.I.E.L.D., we also have a major aspect of this film that I haven't talked about yet, and that is the actual Winter Soldier, who's none other than, drumroll please, it's Bucky. It's Bucky, we, we, we all knew. We all knew it was gonna be Bucky. When it comes to Bucky, Steve's childhood friend from the beginning of Captain America the Winter Soldier, I, I really do love how much of a part he plays throughout these Captain America movies, especially in Civil War, who, I mean, he ends up causing a lot of stress there. This movie, he ends up causing a lot of stress. And overall, throughout the entire MCU, I wouldn't say he's a terrible character. However, I will say that his strengths in this film particularly lie in not being a character, because there's really not much there, but lie in being a weapon. He is a weapon for Hydra, and it's honestly kind of dope. It's really cool to see Cap fight somebody who effectively has the same strength as him. And while usually I'm irritated by villains that have the same abilities as the heroes, like Iron Man 1, or Iron Man 2, or Ant-Man, or look at most of the films in the MCU, this one's a bit different because it's not a bunch of CGI action, and instead, like I said earlier, we get a much more grounded, realistic approach to the action. Plus. Bucky is Cap's friend and Steve doesn't want to hurt him and so that adds a little bit more tension to these fight scenes. What I am still conflicted on is the way they do the overall villain in this film. 
we do get this older rich white guy named Pierce who's technically the villain of the film but honestly like I don't really care a lot about his character and at the end of the day it's really the use of Bucky as a weapon and the destruction of S.H.I.E.L.D. by Hydra which I really enjoy. I like to take a look at these films villains and include that in my overall reasons for liking or disliking the movie. It's why Iron Man 1 is great until the third act. It's why Ant-Man is pretty good until the third act. It's why Thor The Dark World is pretty bad. When it comes to The Winter Soldier though, I think that by using Bucky and by using Hydra as the main villain and Pierce just being like this bit of a catalyst, just like, just like a cog in the gears, I, I think that it's fine with me ignoring him as the main villain and not really letting that hinder my enjoyment of the film at all. At the end of the day, the Winter Soldier's strongest aspects do have to do with the filmmaking. I've already said it a couple times, but the fact that this movie is grounded, it's more realistic, and it, and it expands the universe of the MCU without being a mess is what makes it so great. I love most of the characters. I love Sam. I haven't even talked about him, but he plays a big part in this movie and I actually really enjoy seeing his character throughout the other films and I, I'm really excited with what they're going to be doing with Falcon in the future but he, this is his debut and he really does well in it. I love the big twist with Hydra. I love seeing how these events not only impact the rest of the MCU but impact Steve Rogers as a character. This is absolutely a film that I want to see again in the future since I've only seen it a couple of times. I honestly wouldn't mind picking this up off the shelf, watching it whenever. I think that it could definitely be one of my favorite MCU films over time, and it's not only a good film within the context of the MCU, but a good standalone film. If you've never seen it, definitely check it out. Watch it within the context of the Captain America trilogy. If you're watching the MCU, it's definitely a must watch. If you're rewatching everything for Endgame, I'd say it's still worth the rewatch. You could definitely skip it if you wanted to. But I think overall, it adds a lot to the universe. But that's all the time we have for today. If you liked the video, go hit that like button. If for reason you didn't like it, hit the dislike button. Let me know in the comments what your thoughts on Captain America and the Winter Soldier are. Let me know what movies you're excited for me to talk about. We're inching our way to Endgame. I'm trying. I'm, I'm, I'm going to try to be like a content machine. Oh, also real quick, I might be getting like a real job soon. I, might, I, I need to get like some kind of part-time job to help pay the bills. So videos might be slowing down a little bit more in the future. We'll see how that happens. It might actually give me a chance that I won't be doing as much client work to where I can just spend a lot of my free time on this. We'll see what happens. I still want to make as many videos as I can. Check out the Patreon if you'd like to help, per help me pursue this dream of keeping this show and making it like full time. But in the meantime, if you like this episode, go ahead and subscribe for more Your Everyday Nerd. I'll see you tomorrow. Goodbye.